Um, well, we're gonna raise this sidewalk slab that has the same uh, trip as pitch hazard. You can see the yellow mark, mark uh, indicating that it's a safety issue. So we're gonna bring the uh, slab up to eliminate that trip edge and uh, make it a safe entry. So let's just put four in. We have total control of the slab on both ends. Okay. We'll address both both the uh, trip edges. In Ohio, what would you charge for something like this? It depends on, once again, state to state. Uh, obviously in uh, Montana, you're going to charge more because you have such a distance to go, but you have the minimum uh, load of, you come out, you tear it out, you form it, you bring in the cement truck, cement truck's going to charge you 350 to show up. So you're getting to 50%, I'd, I'd get a couple hundred bucks, 300 bucks off this sometimes, but a couple hundred bucks anyhow. Now, what do you typically do? like? You know, you're gonna get a call from a customer that, that you know, they have the yellow line painted and that's the, what they want addressed. Is the idea then to walk the entire property, look for other spots yeah, that you can do? Always look for other stuff on the property. You wanna do more than just a minimal job. You wanna go evaluate everything so they have safe entry at all their doors and exits. You can point out stuff that they don't realize that's going on, like negative water flow that's 
you may have a little bit of a trip edge that they're living with, but it's going to get worse. Unless you change that water flow, you're going to get continually worse. So it's best while you have all your gear here to address it, and it's more cost effective than to have somebody come back out again. The more you have on the property, the better price it is going to reflect to the customer. Yeah. Yeah, rather than 200 per slab, then you can Absolutely. get it down to 100 bucks a slab. You can get down here if you have enough slabs. You can come in here for 100 bucks a slab. And, you know, and you could do it. You had 20 slabs in here. You get them all done in a day. Okay. And that's fair for the contractor and for the um, homeowner or okay. church. Church owner. Church. Well, I don't think you're the owner of the church, but. <laughs> sure the dust is cleaned out of these holes or it won't stick so now what do you suggest for colors you said there was three different colors that you normally yeah, work off of use a non-shrink route this is what we have sometimes you're going to use uh, um, if you use a regular uh, mortar, you want to add some adhesive to it so it sticks better. But you all, really want to use a non-shrink grout. But sometimes you're limited to what's in the air, available to you in the area. Uh, if you have the chance to get the proper product ahead of time, I'd get a non-shrink grout that comes in light or dark. And then you can mix them 50-50 so you can go a light, medium, or dark. Because you can kind of help color coordinate to the slab. Uh, each slab's going to be a difference in color, so you're never going to match them holes 100%. You're just going to get them as close as you can. But if you take the time to go light, medium, or dark, a simple mix, you know, 50-50 for medium, you're way ahead of the game. You know, you're taking extra efforts to, you know, make it a nicer job. It's just more cosmetically appealing when you're done. It does the same function. What are the parameters, Steve, for cold weather? Well, as far as the slab jacking or the ceiling of the slab jack? Well, once you get a, if you get a free, most people think that once you get a freeze line, that's, that's what stops you and it's going to settle. But what's going to happen before the freeze line comes? I don't know if you guys ever had a piece of plywood in the backyard and how it freezes overnight, you get a frost, and how it, what it does is it kind of sticks to the ground like glue, freezes to the ground. Slabs will uh, act the same, the same way. So they're going to stick to the ground. Before you have a freeze line, you're not going to be able to slab jack because these are just going to be stick, stuck to the ground before there's even a freeze line. The freeze line's a deep freeze for a while. So usually about three, three to five days below freezing, night and day, is when you start uh, really expecting the end of the season. It's got to be warm three to five days, day and night, before you can start above freezing. I have a, I personally have a lake that's about the size of this property, maybe three times the size of this property this church is on. And when it's frozen solid, that's my barometer. I'm done. When it's half frozen, I'm full on. So if you would start by stating your name. Ed Blake. And, and what do you, what's your, what's your profession here? Well, my responsibility here at Gilbert Presbyterian Church is I'm responsible for buildings and grounds. Okay. And what do we have here today? What do we do today for you? Well, you've leveled up a problem that we had for a long time. And uh, by leveling this, I don't have to worry about my people tripping over it when they come or go to church. Yeah. And there have been a couple that have tripped. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been talking about solving this problem? Probably about three years. <laughs> three years, huh? And how long did it take us to complete this job for you? Uh oh, I wasn't watching my watch. I was watching what you were doing. <laughs> Maybe 15, 20 minutes, 30 yeah, minutes of cleanup. 15, 20 minutes, probably. Yeah. So what do you what do you think of the results? Right now, it's absolutely unbelievable. And I, I never could have conceived doing something like this with concrete. Yeah. Really good. Wonderful. Good luck.